favorite quote is, for babies, every day is first love in Paris, every wobbly step is skydiving, every game of hide and seek is Einstein in 1905. I once lived in a house in San Francisco um, with a whole bunch of friends, and one of them was a single mom and a little girl named Akelia, and I would babysit Akelia a few times a week for many years, and she taught me about um, play and wonder and uh, and any of you who have little kids know what a trip it is, what an absolute trip it is to do something simple like go for a walk and I don't know, see a cat or find a feather and the kid just marvels at it and you get to marvel too and in that way it's sort of like, like a contact eye. Um, so Kelly taught me about this and, and especially about how play was this constant flood of, of images and situations and ideas, and then she unselfconsciously followed those ideas and pursued them the second she had them, even if it meant pretending. So she'd have an idea, and then boom, she's doing it. As adults, as we all know, as we, as we oh sorry, pretending. <laughs> pretending is a key part, and as adults, we um, tend not to pretend as much, right? And we have a bit more of a filter on, on whether something's sensible and whether something, you know, is this something I want to mention in this meeting? This is a little childlike. And part of that is we narrow our focus to deal with adult life, adult life um, and get a grasp on sort of literal reality, which is necessary and inevitable. Like, if you're landing a, in a 747, you don't want the pilot pretending he's a seagull. You know, you want it focusing on the task. But as we gain these adult abilities, we lose that, that sort of ability to play and that sense of wonder and that ability to sort of have a crazy idea and follow through with it and do it, even if it means pretending. Um, we learn what's possible and what's not, what's sensible and what's not, what's becoming and what's unbecoming, and those literally get programmed into us, such that we edit sort of what we do and what we say, but more kind of shockingly, we even edit our own thoughts. So before we even think things, a certain part of us is saying, is that a sensible thought? Is that a sensible thought? And the result is adult consciousness. You know, here we are, drinking to loosen up and be playful again. Yeah. Um, as, cre as creative professionals, we certainly don't want to be editing our imaginative thoughts, right? It's sort of contrary to what we do. Um, and we all know that sort of the big breakthrough, industry-changing innovations are things that seem ridiculous and impossible at first. But you have to have the bravery to follow through with them anyway and, and sort of have the faith that you can find a way to get there. Um, Kelly once said, one night she said, Rob, you have your own money in your own car. We can do anything. <laughs> And, and I, it's so summed up this truth of just like anything, we can do anything, we're, we're grown-ups, you know? So we went to the shop and filled the shopping trolley with candy and built a huge castle out of candy, you know, just like whatever the hell. And, and it just shows that as adults we forget how much we can actually do in the world and make happen in the world. And um, it's not, we're not a train on a track with just a few options, it's more like walking in a meadow and there's a million directions we could go at any time. Um, one particular area where this gets forgotten is at work. Where at work we're sort of on, you know, our adult mode to the max, you know, and we sort of think sensible thoughts. Uh, I work at a company called Naked. These are crazy offices, and we help companies come up with new business ideas. And I work on new product ideas from companies like Coke, all the way to Coca-Cola to Google. And um, a lot of it is getting adults to stop um, filtering themselves and getting to pretend. And one of the ideas is, um, it's founded on this idea that second guessing is what squashes creativity. So if you're filtering yourself as you come up with the ideas, you're not gonna get any big innovations. So we do these exercises where if the task is to come up with crazy stuff, then you don't second guess yourself as much. So one, one exercise is take each barrier or constraint in the project and turn it upside down. So if budget is a constraint, say, okay, what if you had $100 million to come up with three solutions? Another exercise is pretend um, that you'll come up with three ideas where you'd get fired if you did them, but they would work really well. Or come up with three ideas using futuristic materials that don't even exist yet. And in this way, you start with sort of the fantastical, imaginative stuff that everyone's excited about, and then you work back to reality. So start with crazy, interesting ideas, and then find which parts of those can be made feasible. Rather than starting, with most companies do, start with reality and constraints, and then come up with little incremental changes. You know, look at the competitors, what are they doing, what if we add this feature, which results in pretty unremarkable products. Um, if I can leave one thing with you, it's that 50 or 100 years from now, they're going to look back at 2009, and they're going to say, wow, that's before they even invented the blah, blah, blah. And that's before they realized blah, blah, blah. 
And, and certain people and certain companies are going to make those changes. And those are going to be the companies and people that let the adult in them that can sort of make things happen in the world listen to the child in them that can imagine things. 